welcome to the Kids Eating Broccoli podcast, where we believe that raising healthy kids shouldn't be complicated. Our mission is to inspire 20 million families worldwide to take the steps to raise the healthiest generation in our history. We'll interview some of the world's leading experts in nutrition, human potential, and children's health, as well as extraordinary chefs and foodies to gain insight into simple, fun and creative ways to introduce natural health into homes across this planet. All right. Well, welcome to this very special episode of the Kids Eating Broccoli podcast. Today we have Sabrina Ann Zielinski, also known as Mama Z with us. And we just had a few minutes of pre-chat, and uh, I can't wait to share her with you guys. So without further ado, welcome to the podcast, uh, Mama Z. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're welcome. And I'd love for you to just introduce yourself and share your story, because I think it's uh, relevant to a lot of the people who who will be listening. Sure. Well, um, growing up, I had a lot of digestive issues, and um, seven out of 13 kids um, on one side of our family was diagnosed with ADD or ADHD, and um, so that was part of my culture. I grew up, um, you know, I had done the fine gold diet uh, when that was a popular thing and the elimination diet, Um, and then I had been on Ritalin for many, many years, and um, I knew I wanted something different, especially when I got into um, college and my professional days, I really wanted a change. And so, uh, you know, years down the line, I had literally had so many different medications that I was put on for allergies, the ADHD, this and that. And some of those things caused additional stomach problems, which I had to take a different additional stomach medicine. So I was on 10 different prescription drugs while I was in my twenties. And I knew that I was, I needed to be free. I I knew I did. Um, My pastor used to talk about uh, the dynamics of fasting. And uh, so I decided to do a fast. I didn't know it was going to last 10 days. And I had already taken myself, um, you know, with help off of one of the medications that I was on. And um, and that was um, uh, to regulate my cycle. I'd already taken myself off of that. And then I literally, um, with the permission of my doctor, I told them I was going to do a fast. I wanted to see if that was okay. They said, yeah, so you'll probably be coming back to us, but uh, you know, go ahead and try to do it. So I ended up doing a 10-day water fast, and I know not everybody is called to do that, but I definitely felt like it was time. And by the third day, I saw black stuff coming out of my pores. And I, it must have been some of the heavy metals from the drugs and all of the other stuff, but I'll tell you, that changed me. And I started being able to think clearer, and I realized that my body had the ability to heal itself. And I knew I was allergic to a few different things. I knew I was allergic to dairy. I had, I actually had tried eating two pints of ice cream in a day to try to see what would happen. And I would not recommend that, especially if you are allergic to dairy. (laughs) Don't do that. Um, And I'm allergic to sugar. And so, um, and also uh, wheat. And so because that was a really popular thing to have lots of, um, you know, fresh wheat, everything about that time and growing up, um, I really was kind of eating everything that I was allergic to, but I knew there were other things too. So um, I didn't really learn about all of the other um, inflammational eating and how that affected my brain and my gut until I met my husband, um, which was amazing because he had already made transitions in his life and he ate things that were pretty much green or brown all the time. And the thing is, is that I was uh, raised um, as a culinary herbalist's daughter. So I traveled with her to do cooking classes and cooking videos and everything was beautiful. The food was, but it wasn't healthy. And it happened to have all the things I was allergic to. So um, I knew that with my knowledge, with what my mom had taught me and helping her uh, write cookbooks, that I could start to change out ingredients potentially with family recipes to make things healthy, anti-inflammatory, but not just things that were green and brown. Although, you know, there are many green and brown things that I love. So um, in doing that, I it blew my socks off because now where, um, you know, essential oils did help, but until I made those dietary changes, it was like the 
the key that was missing in the lock. And then as soon as that happened, I just watched um, everything change, whether it was um, how, I, how I thought about things, how I looked at things. And you know, being involved with the CHAD group, the Children and Adults with Attention Deficit Disorders group, for so many years as a mentor and as a local coordinator, and other things, I knew all the things that I could do at school and um, at work to, to help with the modification, um, whether it was, you know, sitting in the front of the classroom, front and center, or um, making sure that I w had everything written down um, just like it needed to, that I understood work tasks, and then I went back over them with my, my boss. But what, what I didn't realize was that um, I was going to be able to think clear. And if you, if you have never had an issue where you haven't thought clear and then you've thought clear, you know the difference. And I'll tell you what, you never want to go back. Yeah. Wow. So I just want to dive in, like, as I'm listening to you, tell me this or tell us this, uh, story. What, what do you think it was? Cause, um, you know, you mentioned the Chad group and I know that they talk about, you know, you mentioned sitting front and center writing a lot of strategies to, I don't know. Um, I don't mean to to put words into their mouth or whatever, but like to cope yeah. with or to sort of, it seems like a lot of quote unquote mainstream perspective on some of these focus issues, behavior issues, ADHD type issues with our kids are you're kind of stuck with it. So we got to teach you how to how to compensate or or deal with it rather than here are some things we can do to really resolve it. And it sounds like yeah. a moment happened for you, or maybe several yeah. moments where you realized that wasn't the road you wanted to be on anymore. So you wanted to explore something else. Can you say a little bit more about like how that occurred for you personally? Yeah. So, um, when, when, when my pastor talked about Isaiah 58 fasting, which talked about bringing forth healing speedily and all these other, you know, great promises, I really started just seeing what that was going to mean for me. And, you know, being involved with the Chad group for so long, you know, and I taught in schools and I taught and I helped write IEPs and section 504 accommodations. And so I help people so much with that. And I realized that, you know, it was kind of more of a, a promise that we're just going to, you know, remediate what we need to, modify what we need to, and do the best we can. But I knew there was something more. And when I experienced the healing that I did, I wanted to share that with everybody. I, anybody can, you know, have the same kind of thing. And, and for everybody, because we have bio-individuality, we're all different. And different triggers are different things for us. But there are so many commonalities with a lot of um, the ingredients that I had an allergy towards and what it did to my body. And talking to a lot of people, you know, in this world, there's so many things that we're dealing with, you know, toxically with all the Wi-Fi embedded around us and the air, the water, you know, you, th you start actually thinking about it and you're like, man, I'm surprised we're all alive, you know, really. And, you know, not to be negative, but, um, and, but it's interesting because with all of that, we need to do our best part to stay as toxic free as we possibly can, because there are so many things around us. And, you know, you look at some of the food, like, um, I, I pulled this, this, these uncrustables, um, you know, from, it, well, we were on a field trip and I watched the change that happened when this child mm -hmm. who was, he was doing really good and um, he was focused and he was, you know, I, w I was one of the mama ducks over him because he was one of my kids for that day. And he ate that and I saw him go bananas after that and, and just how quickly that that happens. And like, this is the food. And, you know, um, one of our friends, Robin Openshaw, she, um, she calls it Franken food. And, you know, when you find out like what's actually in our food, you know, most of the things that we want to be consuming don't have nutritional labels. They're in our fresh fruits and vegetables. And, you know, how do you transition from here to here? And so that's when I started really talking with the families. And, you know, I'm like, you know, this is going to be some work. But if you, if you want to do something even more than what you're doing now, this is what I did. And I know you, ha you can have freedom if you're able to do this. Yeah, the other oh, sorry. Go ahead. The other thing is, is that I find with, um, with some families that mothers and fathers don't always agree 
on, um, on nutrition, on um, ways of handling um, their children, especially an ADHD child, because especially if they have other comorbidities like oppositional defiant disorder or other things like that, there are some other dynamics that do happen there in the family that cause a lot of stress. And so because of that, um, you really do have to either lead by example and win that other parent over, or they have to see the change. And so you have to definitely pray about the direction that you're going to go and make sure that um, it's going to be something positive for the whole family. And believe me, if you make a lot of these changes, even small changes can be huge changes to you know, win that other spouse over per se. Yeah, that, that unfortunately is a, a, a big issue that we run into a lot, um, either with parents that are in, you know, in the same household still together that don't see yeah. eye to eye, That's and right. even more so a lot of times, you know, when their parents are divorced or separated and it's right. like, you know, it almost like becomes part of the dynamic of the, the mm-hmm. dissatisfaction in the relationship. So it's, it's always... That's, that's like an extra level of difficulty, but, yes. um, what, uh, so, I mean, gosh, I have like two, two thoughts going at once, but tell us like, where, where's a good place to start? So you're, you're a family, you know, you've been kind of leaning in this direction or thinking that, you know, going the more natural route or that type of thing might, right. there might be an option rather than just, you know, uh, compensating and actually helping, you know, like what you, you experienced in your story, um, sure. with kids, I mean, in particular, uh, I mean, would you recommend that they, they start with a fast? I mean, or where, where do you go when you, when you talk with families about how to get the ball rolling, how to get those first steps? So one of the great first places that they can start is, um, is doing a good detox bath. That's one place. And uh, we try to do this with our kids, you know, and, and because they're, you know, pretty detoxed um, because of the way that we live, uh, we, we do it. Like if we see anybody who's um, starting to even get a cold, we'll do it. But it works so good if you're really trying to detox the body because we use a one cup of Epsom salts to a fourth of a cup of Bragg apple cider vinegar. And then in our hand with some olive oil or almond oil, we'll do uh, one to two drops of lemon, lemon and six to eight drops of lavender. And um, that's going to help open those blood vessels up, cleanse, uh, you know, some of the toxins through, but it also helps kids get a good night's sleep because that's another thing that I found, whether they're on medicine or not, that, um, you know, that brain is moving fast. And um, sometimes it makes it really hard to sleep or get good quality sleep. And we know how we feel if we don't have good quality sleep. So we can't even imagine um, human beings that need more of that and are getting less. So it's really good to start there and also in that diet. And, you know, I've worked with a lot of families and, um, you know, one of them was like, you know, I'm giving them Lucky Charms and Fruit Loops every day that they come home from school. And I know that's not good, but I don't know what else to do. And a good doctor friend of ours many years ago said, you know, when, um, when you're on the Oreos, switch them to Newton's O's first before switching them to something healthier. And as you're making other changes in your diet, then it's going to be at the point where some of those taste buds are changing and things are adapting so that we're getting them onto a healthier lifestyle. And in our new book, The Essential Oils Diet, um, one of the things that we cover is some of the things that we do as a culture in our family but it works out really good from like black bean brownies to different smoothies that we do and incorporating, um, we have an avocado chocolate pudding, which is made with cacao, but then we hide vegetables that they're not eating right now in there. And, you know, we've hidden beets in there and, and I got some of my beet juice right here. I love beet juice. That's freshly steamed. And we'll, we'll, We'll put lots of good things in there, and sometimes even the pickiest eaters um, will even eat those kind of things. So there are a lot of options as far as transitioning, and you know, finding more um, fresh fruits and vegetables. If if you're stuck on the same couple, you know, one of our favorite resources is the um, EWG, the Environmental Working Group. And some people say, okay, well, I don't want to spend a billion dollars. And actually, if you're not buying a lot of prepackaged stuff, a way of life that doesn't involve that kind of thing, or even gluten-free prepackaged stuff, because unfortunately, a lot of the bread and other stuff that's out there is junk. 
And the, I mean, it, and they're making, you know, five, $10 a pop versus like a couple dollars on, you know, mainstream stuff. And I'm not saying that that's not, you know, some of that's not usable, but um, for the most part, if we can start to transition our pantries to be a lot healthier and a lot tighter, those taste buds will change over time and they're going to start desiring more healthy things. Yeah, that makes some good sense. So you, I hear you saying, you know, kind of a gradual move instead of just, you know, sudden change and that, you know, that makes sense as a parent myself, you know, yeah. it's like, you could just imagine making some drastic change and all the, the pushback we'd get. And, you know, well, and my husband is the drastic change guy yeah, yeah. and he learned long ago, like that, we, you know, we just don't do that, you know, like, and, and with kids, they, they need to feel confident. And they need to feel like they have some security, whether it's in their schedule, what they eat, all of that stuff. It just provides that other security, especially if they have more of the ADHD-like tendencies. Yeah, that's a perfect segue, actually, to my next question. Because in our pre-chat, you were mentioning how you even have root, somewhat scheduled or routinized, like how you guys eat with some flexibility in there. And I thought that was a really cool uh, sort of unique perspective or point. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yeah. So, um, you know, my, my son, um, my, my oldest son, I have four kids, um, two girls, two boys, girl, boy, boy, girl. And my oldest son always will ask, uh, he used to, all right, what are we having for dinner? And he'd ask us at breakfast. Okay. What are we having at the next meal? Okay. When, when is the next meal and what are we having? And it was like over and over and over again. So I really, I came up with this method because I wanted them to know, oh, it's, it's Monday night. It's breakfast night. We're going to have a quiche. We're going to have a casserole. We're going to have a healthy nut pancakes. We have a lot of different things that we do. And then the cool thing is, is we know not every week, um, do we always have time to make all of those things? So what we do is when we when we have the time in those weeks, we make extra and then freeze them. So we make our own non-ego egos. Um, you know, we have the um, healthy, uh, you know, nut pancakes and um, waffles that we've made. We'll add some blueberries and then we'll freeze those in containers so that we know when we have a crazy day that we'll always have an option because drive through is not an option in our house. And if you make that a way that it's more of the slow food movement than the fast food movement and you force yourself to not operate in that um, lifestyle anymore, you'll pre-think a lot more of the prep. So we'll have, we have tuna or salmon on Tuesday and then lots of flexibility with that. But then we'll do like an Italian night. Um, we'll do a picnic in the parking lot, um, which we say, cause we, we are runners. All our kids run, we run together with our kids. And so one of the nights we do a picnic in the parking lot and, um, and so we have like similar things that we rotate from. But the cool thing is, is that we don't, we don't really have leftovers because leftovers become like mommy and daddy lunch or the kids lunch. Um, they have kind of more of a set thing. I make a healthy um, coconut, unsweetened coconut milk yogurt that I sweeten with some stevia and a little bit of essential oils. And so they absolutely love that. And so we make yogurt cups and fruit cups and veggie cups, at, you know, for dinner, but we, we, um, change out the things that we have in there so that they're, it's always something new. They know what they've got in, in their lunch, but they know that it's, it's going to be something new. It's not going to be the same old thing every single day. Cause who wants that? Nobody does. <laughs> Absolutely not. But when we have toppings, like when we do our taco night, then anything that we have left over. We have the kids help with um, our healthy pizza night where we'll do cauliflower crusted pizza or almond crusted pizza. And then they're able to, um, we, use a, we use a variety of different non-dairy and or vegan cheeses um, on top of the pizza. And then we let them decorate it with whatever other toppings that we have left over from taco night. So we make it fun and it's always something different and they just, they love that. So I'm assuming that these recipes and ideas are in your new book or some like that? Yeah, most of them are in our new book. And we have some new courses that are coming out too. I have a gluten-free Italian that comes out um, actually on um, May 1st. So uh, we're, we're 
we're trying to get more and more of that information out there because it's so important for parents to feel armed with stuff that doesn't taste like rice cakes. And, you know, and you might love rice cakes. Um, I, I don't know, but, um, but if you do, good for you. But most kids that I have seen, that's not exactly their favorite thing. So um, we try to make it fun and exciting and that they get to be a part of it. We always do a cooking project um, during the week or weekend if we didn't have time during the week. That way they feel like they are a part of it. And so much to the fact that my kindergartner, when they asked him what he wanted to be, he wanted to be a baker, you know? So they, they love it. That's fun. Yeah. Um, that's great because I mean, I think that that's like, it's all great to, to have the intellectual understanding that, Oh, you know, I shouldn't mm -hmm. give my kids processed foods. I mean, those things are important to know, but to have, you know, to be able to put it right into action and have support around that is such a useful thing too. Um, so it sounds like that's kind of what you're creating with the, with, you know, within the book. And then the course you're talking about, I think I saw that on your guys' website too. Yeah, so that's right up. And probably actually it'll have already launched when we, when whoever's, you know, when you guys are listening to this. So go check it out for sure. Um, can you, let's let, I want to circle back just for a minute. You mentioned sleep and you mentioned the detox bath and some essential oils and so forth. Can you give us some more of your best tips about helping? Cause I mean, for personally, my middle, I have three daughters and my middle daughter, who's eight, almost nine, she's has trouble sleeping and we do mm -hmm. different things, but I'd love to hear some of your best uh, tips and strategies for that. Absolutely. So um, we do a variety of different things, but every night, and my oldest daughter, she called it the royal touch. Like I give them a little massage before they go to bed. And so it's kind of just part of the, the culture that we have, but we fill the diffusers. And one of the things that people ask, because, you know, uh, one of the good low hanging fruit is if you have any plugins or any artificial air fresheners or perfumes, they need to get tossed. It, it causes neurotoxicity as well as all kinds of other things that are linked to autoimmune issues as well as cancer and other things like that. But what you'll find is when you detox from those things that your body becomes more receptive um, to essential oils and other things and you can't tolerate those non-natural smells and even those non-natural cleaning smells either. Um, and so what we do to try to make it easier because you, you want to have good, pleasant smells in the house and with all the diffusers and things they have these days, boy, I'll tell you, they weren't like that 15 years ago. We had little rings that you could put on top of your, um, light bulbs and, oh my gosh, I, I can tell you stories. Um, so, you know, one of the things that I recommend is if you're going to do a scent, whether it's upstairs um, and at night or whatever, have the same scent go throughout the whole level of that house because you don't want things competing with one another. So I have a variety of different ones for kids um, and for bedtime. You can do, uh, most, most diffusers take four to six drops of essential oil and I like to do equal parts of, la of lavender and chamomile and vetiver. That's one of them. But see, we don't go to the gym and do the same workout every day, just like we don't eat the exact same thing every day. And so because of that, we need to, we need to vary it. So trying another one would be, and we like to do something like this, where it's um, half peppermint, half lavender. When we do running and, and the kids are crazy and it's time to, what we want to do is open those airwaves up and knock them out. So the peppermint helps to really open up those airways. And of course, the lavender will do the knockout part. And, um, and it works really fast. So I like to have a variety. And, and so I'll put other things um, and I'll change those up too. Sometimes I'll use chamomile and peppermint. Sometimes I'll use other scents together. But the lavender... Um, and you have to monitor too your kids and, and what their likes and dislikes are. And you'll find that that does change, especially if you do have plugins in the wall. Some people, you know, aren't ready for certain scents, but when they detox off of some of those chemical, like chemically related things, they're able to. Another good one is orange and lavender. And then, of course, you could always substitute lavender for chamomile and whatnot. So and what I also recommend people doing, and the kids are a part of this, and, and they have, we have like a pitcher, and they'll fill it up, and then we'll just go and fill all the diffusers as well. So sometimes we preset them for the next day, and for us, you know, downstairs, um, 
we don't have any of the kids or us sleeping downstairs. So we'll actually, if knowing what we're doing the next day, we'll set up diffusers so that they're all set. So all we have to do is push the button because it's that easy. But the cool thing is, is that scent can change every day and that really helps to calm people down. So that same um, uh, combination that I mentioned before, the lavender, the chamomile, and the vetiver, those are fabulous together. And I call that blend sweet sleep. And I put that into a carrier oil. So it's um, basically, I like to use um, equal parts. So I'll take all three of those and put it into a, a little bottle of that was empty and then I'll add those oils so that they're all together in there because kids need a higher dilution than adults. So they're not going to need as many drops per ounce. So for adults, it's six to eight drops for every one ounce. For kids, you want to do about four to six drops for every one ounce. And then I pre-make up um, the oil that I use at night before bed. I give them a little foot massage. I give them a back massage. One of them likes their shoulders done. One of them likes their tummy done. You know, each one has their own thing. And I make that part of the bedtime process because it gives them a few more minutes to talk to them and then they calm down and I like to put them to bed. So one of the things, like as we start training the kids for sleep and all of my kids have slept through the night very quickly. Um, I've had larger babies and they were all breastfed, but we have, um, we've always done, you know, just, j we've tried to get them on a really good routine right from the start. And, you know, later on when they're going through teething and other things, we like to use, um, from, um, uh, Kids Herbs. Um, I think it's called Kids for Herbs or Herbs for or Herbs for Kids. It's called um, Super Valerian Calm. And that works really, really good, especially if um, the child is just not calming down or it's teething related or other things like that. That's a really good one. And they also have one that's called Calm Forte, which is a homeopathic that works for, you know, the child that has a harder time, you know, calming down at night. So you can kind of work the outside with the oils and work the inside with a homeopathic um, if, if need be. But I find doing that helps so much. And even um, your child that has not gotten sleep or a good amount of sleep in a while, you'll find them knocked out. That That's really great. You know, I know that that's a very, I mean, that's that's kind of become a problem of our modern day. You know, you, yes. you mentioned earlier on the, you know, the Wi-Fi signals around. I know that's mm -hmm. one of those things that people, when they start turning off their Wi-Fi routers at night, that's one of the biggest changes. I mean, across the board that's reported. Yes. And that's just one of many things, you know, our right. kids are sort of in an epidemic level of, of lack of sleep with electronics and stimulation and blue light and all those things. Right. So, you know, those are some really great uh, strategies to use. You know, it sounds like it's, I think you mentioned the word culture before, like in your family, and that's like mm -hmm. a, a culture. And I, what I love about it, aside from all of those, you know, effective sense and things like that is that, um, what you were saying, you know, you get those extra few minutes with each kid, you know, they get that connection time and that, you know, aside from the, the impact of the, the different essential oils and so forth also, you know, has to have a, a major relaxing, calming effect on them. Well, and one of the other things I found too is, so nobody gets breakfast unless their bed is made and they have their clothes on. And I have people that will come down still to this day without their clothes on and, or, dribbling of dirty clothes on the ground. Um, and so I always say, have you made your bed? Oh yeah. Uh, no. Uh, and, uh, well, and you're not dressed. Do you want to eat breakfast? Y yeah, I do. I really want to eat breakfast. Okay. Well, we got to get that done there before we have that. And so, um, I make it so that it, they have to do some, some work too. And, uh, we have our process in the morning and, um, you know, they have to get everything done if they are even going to turn on the TV, like there's no even turning on any of anything unless it's all done and they would be ready prior to getting in the car early. Um, they can't watch an iPad. They can't watch a TV. They can't do any of that stuff. So we have kind of stuff in place. And one of the things um, that we learned from uh, a good friend who was a child of eight is they had the cow program and that's child of the week. And so the cow program, in order to be qualified for cow, they have to be able to ride in the front seat of the car and do an adult chore. 
So we have that for each of the kids that it that qualifies for cow, and then they're able to sit up in the front seat every day that week for school, and they love that. That I I did not think that that was going to go over as good because I was like, well, that is a great idea. So then anytime they would go to the store or we would take someone to the store, they automatically would get front seat. They love it. They want to be able to do that adult chore in order to qualify for cow in order to be closer to us in that front seat. So, you know, having that be part of the culture, having them do work in the house and, and sure, are they going to, are they going to swivel sweep the floor the best? Well, they think they are the awesomest at it, but I'll tell you, there's a few times that once they're gone, I might go over it a couple times, but they think they are. And you know what? When I was growing up, I probably wasn't the best toilet scrubber in the whole world, but I thought I was, and I volunteered for it because I thought that I was the best toilet scrubber. And so having kids a part of your work culture within the house, I think is really important. Even our two and a half year old, she knows how to operate that swivel sweeper and help water the plants and all of that stuff. So just keeping them involved with the culture because it's, it, it's, easier to do it yourself. It really is. But taking that extra time to have them be part of it really kind of gives you more of that, you know, slow life moment versus all the quick stuff. Cause you can have everything else in a second. Yeah, that's wonderful. That that's really great. Uh, direction. I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to look at doing that cow program in my house too. <laughs> see how that goes over. Well, awesome. Um, I appreciate you taking some of your time and sharing your immense wisdom with us. Where so if somebody wants to find the courses you were talking about, tell us where we find that. Yes, our website is naturallivingfamily.com. And we also have a podcast. It's naturallivingfamilypodcast.com. And our new book is The Essential Oils Diet. And it's the it's essentialoilsdiet.com. So they can reach us as any of those places. But we have so many great DIY things just free right there on our website, uh, naturallivingfamily.com, um, and lots of different things for kids and rollerballs for kids and, and um, a lot of different essential oil-based recipes, as well as um, our courses. We have a course on how to detoxify, detoxify your home and, and, and detoxifying the five most toxic areas, as well as some of these other courses that are going to be coming out. We have a gardening course that's out, our uh, gluten-free Italian, and it's all allergy-friendly. It uh, gives you different options. Um, and also our salads class is going to be coming out soon, as well as an at-home exercise course too. Awesome. And is that at-home exercise for the whole family? You can do it with the whole family. I know we have. Yeah. And uh, if you ask Dr. Z today, he, I, I crushed him this weekend and he is so sore. Yeah. <laughs> You're saying he would admit that to us? Yes, he would. Oh, okay, good. He, good. he loves it. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, awesome. So thank you so much. Uh, I, I know I got some, I learned some things that I'm going to institute in my own household. So I appreciate awesome. that personally and, you know, sharing all this great stuff with our audience. Um, it's been wonderful. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, thanks for listening to this episode of the Kids Eating Broccoli podcast. Hopefully you got a lot of valuable tips and strategies and learned some new things like I did out of this interview. Please go to wherever you listen to podcasts, iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, so on and so forth, and leave us a review and a rating and share this podcast with anyone you know who might benefit from it. When you give reviews and ratings, it helps other parents and other people find these podcasts and learn from these awesome guests that we have, just like you and I have been doing. This podcast episode was brought to you by uh, CBD oil products from HempWorks. HempWorks, uh, I partnered with HempWorks because I meet my top three criteria for CBD products. The hemp that the CBD is extracted from is organically grown in the U.S., the extraction process is CO2, so there's no chemicals or other harsh solvents. And every batch is third-party, independently tested for potency and purity. Plus, they give you a 60-day money-back guarantee, empty bottle money-back guarantee on your first order. So if you want to learn more or to order some of that, you can go to the website, which is drellisorcbd.com. That is D-R-E-L-L-I-S-O-R-C-B-D dot com. All right. See you next time.